Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today I'll be looking at two related questions. The first is, what is mania? And the second is, how is mania related to bipolar disorder? If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss anything new. Now when we talk about mania, we're talking about a manic episode. And it's important to understand that a manic episode is not the same thing as bipolar disorder. Technically, a manic episode would always indicate some sort of mental disorder, but we don't know which one until we go through the criteria and then look at the criteria for different mental disorders. There are four main criteria for a manic episode, and the second criterion, criterion B, contains the symptom criteria, and there are seven symptom criteria. So first, let's take a look at criterion A. Criterion A indicates that a manic episode is a distinct period of abnormally and persistently elevated, expansive, or irritable mood, and abnormally and persistently increased goal-directed activity or energy. This must last a week, and it must be present most of the day, nearly every day, unless an individual is hospitalized. In that case, there's no time limit. Now taking a look at criterion B. This is the criterion that contains the symptom criteria for a manic episode. It also supplies additional information about how to evaluate those symptoms. It indicates that three or more of the seven symptoms are required for a diagnosis, or four or more are required if we only see an irritable mood. So this is irritable mood only. So if there is an expansive mood, an elevated mood combined with irritable mood, it would still be three or more. Now we also see other information here, which is that the symptoms must be present to a significant degree and represent a noticeable change from usual behavior. So if the symptom criteria in criterion B are interpreted without reading this part, it would be easy to have a false positive because a lot of these symptoms are seen in everyday life. It does have to be present to a significant degree and it must be a change from the usual. Those are important stipulations for criterion B. So taking a look at the seven symptom criteria in criterion B, we see increased self-esteem or grandiosity, a decreased need for sleep, individual is more talkative than usual, we see a flight of ideas or racing thoughts, distractibility, increased goal-directed activity or increased psychomotor activity, and the last symptom criterion in criterion B is excessive involvement in activities that have a high potential for painful consequences. So criterion C says that this must cause marked impairment and criterion D indicates that the effects of substances or a medical condition can't be what is causing these symptoms. So if the symptoms are attributable to the use of substances or medical condition, it's not a manic episode. So these symptoms could be present and a manic episode would not be present. There needs to be the market impairment and it can't be attributable to substances or medical condition. So there are a lot of factors to consider outside of just the symptom criteria when diagnosing a manic episode. Now, of course, even if a manic episode is present, we have to look at the other mental disorders that have a manic episode as part of them. Now, of course, the one that comes to mind almost all the time would be bipolar disorder. However, it's important to recognize that mania is not synonymous with bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder has two symptom criteria. The first one, criterion A, is the presence of a manic episode. So at least one manic episode would have had to been present in that individual's history. But if we look at criterion B, we see that the manic episode can't be better explained by the presence of another mental disorder, including schizoaffective, schizophrenia, schizophreniform, and delusional disorder, as well as other related psychotic disorders. So there could be another explanation for a manic episode other than bipolar disorder. So as I mentioned before, it's hard to imagine a true manic episode not resulting in some type of diagnosis. It's almost always going to lead to some sort of diagnosis, but that diagnosis doesn't have to be 
bipolar disorder. Another interesting point with the definition of bipolar disorder is there's no mention in criterion A of the presence of a major depressive episode. Yet we almost always think of bipolar disorder as having both manic and major depressive episodes. Only the manic episode is technically required. Now with bipolar 2 disorder, there would have to be a hypomanic episode and a major depressive episode. So the requirements are quite a bit different for bipolar 1 disorder comparing it to bipolar 2 disorder. When we're talking about mania, we're talking about potentially bipolar 1 disorder. Hypomania would potentially be bipolar 2 disorder. A few other important points about mania. It's important to recognize that delusions are fairly common with mania, even though they're not one of the symptom criteria. A lot of times we think of delusions as being present in a manic episode once in a while, but actually 75% of manic episodes would involve delusions, so they're quite common with mania. Another note relates to irritable mood. Irritability in mania tends to increase over the course of a manic episode. So a manic episode could start with elevated or expansive moods without irritability, but we may see the irritability later on in that same manic episode. Also, irritability tends to increase if the goal-directed activities are interrupted. So when looking at mania and bipolar 1 disorder, it's important to look carefully at the definitions of a manic episode and bipolar 1 disorder. It's not always as easy to diagnose as some people may think, and of course it can only be diagnosed by a licensed and qualified clinician. I hope you found this description of mania and bipolar 1 disorder to be interesting. Thanks for watching.